Welcome to Facing South Florida. I'm Jim DeFeedy, and later in the show, I will speak to former Marlins president David Sampson about a new video he made along with filmmaker Billy Corbin attacking the city's proposed deal with soccer icon David Beckham. But before we get to that, I sit down with Chuck Nadd, a Republican candidate for Ag Commissioner in Florida. A graduate of West Point, Nadd served eight years in the military, including two tours in Afghanistan, flying a Black Hawk helicopter. In 2014, he was featured in a Super Bowl commercial for Budweiser. Please join me in welcoming Lieutenant Chuck Nadd He graduated from Harvard Business School on the GI Bill and is now running against Florida Senate President Wilton Simpson, claiming that Simpson is controlled by Big Sugar. This is his first television interview in what could be a wild race. What do you want people to know about you? Well, I'm a lifelong Floridian. I was born and raised here. My parents actually immigrated to Florida from France to get away from socialism in the early 1980s. They first moved to Pensacola and then to Orlando, where I was born. Uh, they had a French restaurant first and then were in the hotel business. When I turned 18, I was fortunate enough on the day of my 18th birthday to start in the U.S. military, enlisted, enrolled at West Point, the U.S. Military Academy, and spent four years there. Why West Point? I think there's two pieces to that. One. My parents never expected I'd be in the military. They just really raised me to be proud to be an American. And I always felt like I wanted to do something to give back. And then when I was in the seventh grade, September 11th happened. And I could have probably told you coming home from school uh, in the seventh grade on that day, September 11th, 2001, that I was going to join the military. And you are, were a Black Hawk pilot, right? That's right. I spent eight years on active duty, so went straight into Army aviation after West Point and uh, went to Afghanistan twice, flying Black Hawk helicopters and spy planes, and I still fly in the U.S. Army Reserve. So I've been in for about 11 years. So why are you running for office now? Absolutely. Well, I was looking at uh, building this business that I had started uh, back in Florida after my time on active duty, and I really grew up around water. I grew up kayaking Mosquito Lagoon. I grew up kayaking Wakiva Springs up in north central Florida. And I saw that there's this really emerging, important issue of water quality and clean water. And I think everyone watching can really attest that this is one of the critical issues that our state faces, not only now, but over the next five, 10 years. And unfortunately, when I looked out at the potential field of folks who are running for agriculture commissioner, I realized that my opponent, Wilton Simpson, has been on the wrong side of this issue. Specifically, he's in the pocket of big sugar. He's been paid for, throughout his entire political career by these special interests that are more interested in their bottom line than in preserving the Everglades and in protecting clean water for South Florida and frankly, all of Florida. Well, if you're gonna make the allegation that he's bought and paid for by Big Sugar, what proof do you have of that? Well, look at his campaign contributions. There are hundreds of thousands of dollars across his various political committees as well as his campaign committee from you know, these big entities like Big Sugar. And well, just because somebody gives a candidate money, does that mean any, anyone who gives you money owns you? No, absolutely not. But you look at his voting record, right? You take a look at you know, what, where he stood on the various issues. You look at uh, 2508, the Senate bill that uh, was curtailed because of the outcry from people here in South Florida who saw how devastating it could be. 2508 is a bill regarding the flow of water south and whether or not it goes into a holding lake, a reservoir. Though that, I, I, people may not yeah. know at home what That's 2508 true. is. So why did you think that was significant that he was trying to push that? It showed that his priorities were Big Sugar's priorities and not the priorities of the people of South Florida. And that's why I'm running, because I want to preserve the lifestyle that really we were able to enjoy as kids. And I have four kids now. I want my children to be able to enjoy the Everglades, to be able to enjoy kayaking and the water recreation that I was able, and frankly, for every Floridian to have access to clean water. So do you think that U.S. Sugar and Florida Crystals, the two big players in, in the sugar industry, are they, are they bad for Florida? Are they evil? I think that we need to find a way where we can manage the growth that we're having in this state and the access that we need to clean water with their priorities. 
I think that right now, state government, particularly the legislature, is too lopsided to these big corporations. And the vast majority of Floridians agree. We know that corporations have too much influence in our politics. And that's why we're laser committed on this water issue, because it's the perfect example of how we need to eliminate the overreaching influence of Big Sugar, Florida Crystals, U.S. Sugar, as you mentioned, and really focus on solutions that can work for everybody. Well, it's not just an issue of water, it's also an issue of air sometimes. You know, one of the things that the current Ag Commissioner has been criticized on by some is that she hasn't done more to stamp down on burn permits. Absolutely. What's your thoughts about uh, sugar burning? Yeah, I think it needs to be curtailed significantly. If you look, the reason why they're burning the sugarcane, for folks who might not know, is that ultimately it makes it easier to pick out the sugar out of the sugar cane, right? It makes the whole process easier. So in an effort to reduce labor costs, they're burning the sugar. Unfortunately, because of the pesticides, because of a lot of what's applied to the sugar cane, there are carcinogens that go up in the air. And like you said, this isn't just an issue of clean water, this is about clean air too. And when you're talking about schools that are nearby, when you're talking about homes that are nearby, there are folks who are bringing the, breathing this into their lungs. And that's not something that we should stand for. So I wanna be solidly against the significant burns. We need to control those burns. And also we need to make sure that water is routed in the right direction. So as Ag Commissioner, you would have the ability to sign for those permits. You issue the permits that allow sugar to do the burnings. Are you saying that you would deny their permits to burn? Yes, I think in many cases those permits would be denied. You've made it clear that you're a big fan and supporter of Governor Ron DeSantis. Did you discuss with him before getting into the race? I did not. I did look at the race and saw that Ron DeSantis needs a strong conservative ally by his side. I saw that throughout the course of this last legislative session and over the last two years, and really the six, seven, eight years before that, Wilton Simpson, my opponent, has not been a friend of conservative values in Florida. If you look at things like gun control, he enacted the bill after Marjorie Stoneman Douglas that brought red flag laws to Florida and that uh, raised the age of ownership. These are issues that are non-starters with the Republicans that are gonna be voting in the primary uh, in uh, August of 23rd of this year. So you oppose red flag laws? I do. Marco Rubio supports red flag laws. There are Republicans that support red flag laws, especially after what happened in Parkland. Why do you oppose them? I think it's very important that we base all of our decisions in constitutional basis. And when you look at the arguments that Ron DeSantis has made, Ron DeSantis has been very clear that he would have been against and he would have vetoed the legislation after Marjorie Stoneman Douglas. It just went too far in curtailing the constitutional rights of Floridians. So I am strongly in favor of a pro-gun agenda, and I really do believe, ultimately, that we need to have a state that has constitutional carry, like 25 other states. Because I think about people like my wife, I think about people that I see across the state who just want to protect themselves. It's becoming a more dangerous world out there, and everybody watching knows that. It crosses all different political divides. Folks realize that they need to protect themselves now. We can't have a candidate who stood against Floridians protecting themselves. So let's talk about uh, what you refer to as constitutional carry or permitless carry. There's several names for it. Um, currently, as the Ag Commissioner, you would be the person who issues concealed weapons permits. Absolutely. Right? There are two million people in the state of Florida who have a concealed weapons permit. Clearly, it's not an onerous task to go through the process of applying for one, of going, taking a safety course. Why would you oppose that? What, I mean, if I need a license and need a safety class and, and driver education before I can operate a vehicle, why not have something for just the operation of a handgun? Well, Jim, I don't think it's mutually exclusive. I think you can still have permitting in addition to constitutional carry. In fact, if you look at the studies, time after time, we see that in states that institute constitutional carry, the amount of permits actually goes up. And the reason is you've got a grandmother who wants to you know, visit her grandkids across state boundaries. She knows she needs that permit. So even though she's already caring, she's able to get that permit and cross state lines. But she wouldn't need that permit if she just stayed in the state of Florida, correct? Absolutely, but the facts bear out that it's you know, really critical. That but why, why is it so onerous to have someone apply for a permit to carry a concealed weapon? Well, I think it's a question of what it means in terms of the Constitution. And the way I read the Second Amendment 
And the way I look at history, I'm a student of history, and I see how important it is that societies maintain their individual citizens' ability to keep and bear arms. Just to go back to Wilton Simpson for a second, sure. President Trump supports and endorsed Wilton Simpson. Uh, doesn't that give him the uh, conservative bona fides he needs for an election? Look, Donald Trump wants to support winners, and I am a winner, and I'm going to win this race. He endorsed Wilton Simpson almost a year before I got into the race. So I don't think he's got the full set of facts. Do you expect to get Ron DeSantis' endorsement in the race? I think Ron DeSantis has a lot of options in what he can do. He's got a very robust agenda that he's trying to get past right now. But I know he's very interested, and I think it's going to be very interesting to see what happens. Did Donald Trump win the 2020 election? I think ultimately when you look at the election, it's tough to say where on the spectrum. There's never a perfectly pure answer to how well a, a, an election was run. There's always, you start at a high school election, there's always going to be some level of disenfranchis disenfranchisement. I think it's really important that we analyze election integrity. And frankly, when you look at the issue of election integrity, there are some open questions about Wilton Simpson. He got involved in some really key races here in South Florida, in the Florida Senate. And for those who don't know, he helped, along with uh, some of the folks that he was working with, prop up candidates who were so-called ghost candidates. I think it's really critical that if people are thinking about election integrity, they think about how Wilton Simpson has, again, been on the wrong side of that issue. I'm going to stand up for election integrity. Ron DeSantis had a very strong bill that he was passing through the Florida legislature, but it got watered down by Wilton Simpson. I think the real question is why Wilton Simpson doesn't stand up for election integrity. I'm just going to come back to it. Let me ask it this way. Is Joe Biden, was Joe Biden elected as president of the United States fairly? I don't have the information to be able to say one way or the other. Is, you serve in the reserves. Is Joe Biden commander in chief and the president of the United States? Joe Biden is the commander in chief of the United States Army. I think uh, every board that I see says that, but ultimately- Do you believe it? I do. I believe that, uh, I believe ultimately that we have a system of laws and frankly, Donald Trump left the White House on his own volition on January 19th or January 20th of 2021. So I think that's a question that you would have to ask Donald Trump, why he left the office if, you know, he didn't think that the election had been settled at that point. What's your views on marijuana? I am strongly in favor of medical marijuana. I really believe, um, and this is coming from a deep place for me because I've seen a lot of my friends in the military, folks who are still in, folks who are veterans, deal with severe PTSD, severe pain from wartime injuries, and I think it would be malpractice to not allow for medical marijuana prescribed by a doctor and really pushed in a way that's safe and effective. Do you believe in the legalization of recreational marijuana? I do not believe that now is the time for the legalization of uh, recreational marijuana. I think there's a lot of analysis that still needs to be done.